So yeah, thanks everyone uh, for joining us today. Uh, this is our webinar to reintroduce the Manta Resort to our Cusini friends and colleagues. That's all of you. Uh, for those of you that I haven't met, I'm Tad Bradley from the Cusini Collection out here in pretty gray Seattle, uh, which is not atypical for January. I'd much rather be where that photo is, as I'm sure all of you would as well, where Juma currently sits. Uh, I'm welcome. I want to welcome in Gretchen, my colleague Gretchen Healy from Cusini out in Denver, probably gray and maybe more white out there. And uh, Matt Saus, who's the managing director uh, of the Manta Resort, coming to us from Arusha. He's also uh, involved in the chairman of the Juanini Foundation, which we'll talk a little bit about. And Juma Bakar, who is the amazing general manager of the Manta Resort, and he's the luckiest guy on this call, I think and that he's actually sitting right now at the Manta Resort on Pemba Island. So we are all uh, envious of you, Juma, I am sure. Thank you. Um, so, but thanks to you guys for staying up late. I know it's getting pretty late on your side um, and we appreciate uh, you taking the time to give us this virtual tour uh, from your, your side of the, of the world in the dark. We're gonna start off the presentation. We're going to start off with a, a short video to set the mood. And um, for those of you that haven't been to Manta, to kind of give you a sense of place. And then we'll jump into um, a lot more about what makes Manta so unique and special, as well as relay some experiences from both Gretchen and I and our um, uh, trips there in the past. So stand by. We'll go to the video here, and then we'll see you on the other side. Thanks, Ted. All right, who's not ready to hop on a, an airplane and get to paradise? <laughs> I know Super I am. Dramatic and, and movie. <laughs> that's actually a preview, a one minute preview of the Manta movie, which if you haven't watched, I highly encourage you to do so. It's on the YouTube page, as well as on our, um, on the Manta website and the Cusini Manta page. We've sent it out in our newsletter and we'll send it out in a follow up to this webinar. But take the 11 minutes to watch an 11 year history of Manta, um, which is an extraordinary story. And we'll tell a little bit up today, but frankly, just scratch the surface. So give yourself some time to, uh, to watch that movie at a later date. I want to introduce um, what is so unique about Manta, and, and that is um, the fact that this is an incredible, luxurious uh, beach resort, but that is not one that you may think of when you think of five-star beach resorts in, in Africa or elsewhere in the world. Um, it definitely is paradise, but there's not a lot of bling, uh, which I think is pretty important. Um, but the, what there is of is, is plenty of Quanini. And a lot of you are gonna say, you know, what the heck is Quanini? And I'd like to introduce Quanini um, first with some text that I'm gonna just read uh, that we wrote. And I probably was either Sonia or Gretchen not me, I, I can't take credit for these words, but this is what we wrote when we actually first announced our partnership with Manta back in 2017, or 2016, excuse me. And I think it really does actually encapsulate why Manta is such a great uh, fit for Cusini and why we were so excited about it. And then I'll welcome in Matt and, and Juma to actually tell us what, what Quanini means and what it's all about. So one word, Quanini, this one beautiful word was the icing on the cake. There was already a lot to love. The internationally acclaimed underwater room, the Indian Ocean with hues of blues, a vast length of fragile coral reef under conservation, 
a multitude of activities on land and sea, including world-class diving for all abilities. Privately owned and operated with a team that have come to be family. Cozy thatched roof cottages, delightful meals and evening ocean breezes. We were already sold and indeed we were. But Juanini and the way which managing director Matt South described the word with such passion and dedication, this is how we knew the Manta Resort was the perfect fit for the Cassini collection. So with that introduction, Matt, I'm gonna let you take us back to what the heck is Quanini and what it means, um, how it started, and then Juma will come in and tell us about what Quanini means to the Manta family. Over to you, Matt. Hi, everyone, and thanks very much, Ted, for such a great intro. As eloquent as, as those words were, um, but I'll give it a good go. Um, Quanini in, in and it was a question that we were so frequently asking ourselves um, in so many different conversations um, and wanting to really understand why we were on Pemba in the first place. Um, we started asking questions about why tourism should be here um, because it's such a fragile island and it's such a special place and why we should be talking with the communities, why we should be involved in um, protecting the natural resource of Pemba. So all these questions why were just coming up constantly and we, we decided to, to answer them, um, but in, in a way that was um, common to all of us. So it was a, it was a question to the group, it was a question to the whole family as to what we were actually doing there and why, why we should be there in the first place. And it was just amazing to come out with the final, um, the final answer to that question. And if anyone asks me why, I think asks any one of the Manta family why, um, it is definitely for a brighter future for Pemba Island. Um, we really, we, we feel as though we are very much part of, um, the growth of Pemba, the development of Pemba, progress is no one can stop. And we are at the moment very lucky to have a voice in, in the future of the island and the future of tourism for, for Pemba. And it's come about through this, this constantly, um, constantly trying to find out what and why we were there in the first place. So that it became a very powerful culture in, in our business. And it's helped us immensely in communicating with the local communities around Pemba um, and also with the government um, and explaining to them um, how we need partnerships and why um, partnerships with the government is so important, et cetera. And I think Juma will, will back me up. Uh, we must be into meeting 2,520 by now. Um, talking about why. Um, so it's been a very powerful tool for us. Um, and I know it means a lot to, to all of us at Manta. Uh, and it is a, it's a kind of phase on, on, on Pemba, I believe. You know, when you talk about Kwanini, everyone, it sparks the conversation about tourism. And it, and it has a very uh, important, significant meaning for us. Um, I think I can introduce Juma as well. Um, he is uh, a very important member of the family, um, and he maybe can help us or help you understand how what it means to the Manta family and how we actually project it onto on, into what we do and um, and allow our guests to be involved in this question. So I'd like to hand it over to Juma a little bit possible. Um, thank you, Matthew. And um, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, uh, Kwanini is important to the, to the Manta family because it's, uh, it's what keeps us together. And um, I should say it's, it is our strength um meaning the reason why we are here at manta and uh, why we do all the things 
we do. So as a family, um, Kwanini gives us, um, it creates a good uh, working environment in the sense that we are all a family and we also consider everyone coming here as a part of the family. And it's, it is for this reason that uh, we don't have uh, the formalities or the standards like in other places where someone check in and then we ask for a passport or anything like that. Because um, if you go to a family, you don't do, you don't do a check in, you know, you just hug each other and, uh, you know, life goes on. Um, we do it that way because of, of Kwanini. And um, I should say, we really appreciate everyone who brings guests to Manta because from the moment uh, someone comes out of the, of the car, you know, the parking area, we already see that this person is, is Kwanini. And uh, like Matthew always, as, uh, I walk in guests from the, at the passage. The first question he asked me is, are they Kwanini? And I will go, yes, they are Kwanini. And, um, you know, even the feedback from the guests, just being here a few moments, a few minutes, they always tell us that they feel that they are members of the Manta family because we don't have to, to, to convince them or tell them anything, you know, just by going to the rooms, coming back, they say, I can already feel that uh, everyone is proud of uh, being here. Everyone knows us by, they call us by, the, by, by their names, which is, I mean, something very, very special, you know, even like a gardener or the beach attendant will know a guest and will call the guest by name because um, it's something that we, we I mean, we, we, we say to, to every one of us that uh, the reason everyone comes here, it's because they want to, to, to experience and we have to give them the Kwanini experience. And this is what uh, brings the, the, the connection with, with, uh, with our guest, because um, everyone is proud of being here and we do everything with the pride from the kitchen. And you see the beautiful thing is, uh, for example, we have, uh, we have Mama Riziki who, has magic hands with baking the bread, you know, and every guest would love to see Mama Riziki just from the bread that they eat, you know, we don't tell them stories anything, but the bread they eat and having known that uh, there's someone called Mama Riziki, who is, Mama Riziki has been here for the last 25 years or I think even 30 years since Manta started and uh, this is what makes uh, the Kwanini family. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Juma. So beautifully said, and, and I think both Gretchen and I as, uh, as guests can absolutely uh, relate to that feeling of arriving at Manta and feeling as if you're being welcomed into the family, not as if you're arriving at a, at a beach resort or a beach holiday, as if you're arriving at a, at a family friends and you're being welcomed as, as family. Uh, it's just, there's something very special. Gretchen, you put it really well yesterday, and then we'll move on to the refurbs, but uh, if you could relay the words you said yesterday in our preparation about what it felt like when you arrived. Well, honestly, I, I'd say within five minutes, it felt like the weight of the world slid right off of my shoulders. Um, it felt like coming home, but like maybe a better version of home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my home doesn't look like, it uh, doesn't have sand to do <laughs> no. <laughs> and I think, guys, you'll hear a lot of marketing speak about family and and this kind of incredibly warm welcome from Manta, and but from other places. And and hopefully, you've had guests that have visited, and they can and they can actually uh, you know relate to that to that feeling and, and relay those kind of feelings as well. If you go to TripAdvisor, we have some a slide at the end if we have time just to show you some of the recent reviews, but. You know, you, you'll see that, that this is um, this isn't just you know marketing speak. This is actually uh, the way things do happen at Manta, and the aim of the Manta family is to make your guests feel like they are being welcomed into this family, into this Quanini family. Um, so a little bit 
the other the other important thing about Quanini is the foundation, and, and I won't go into a lot of details. Matt covered it, um, but uh, it's an important part of why Manta is there is is to uh, work alongside the community to help to preserve the culture and the marine environment and the natural environment um, for future generations, and to really create uh, a positive uh, impact on these communities. For example, the marine conservation area, which Matt will talk about a little bit later which is now a three kilometer no outtake zone in front of the, the resort around the underwater room is uh, done in partnership and was negotiated and worked on in partnership with the local fishing cooperative. And this is a no outtake zone. You can't take fish out of this conservation zone, but it was done in such a way that the fishing uh, cooperatives um, felt empowered and part of the, the decision. And actually, if you watch the 11 minutes um, of Manta, you'll see the, a lot of discussion about how uh, incredible this this conservation zone has been for the uh, for the fishing and for the cooperatives as well. So always thinking about um, how the communities are involved in every decision. So we're going to go through some um, upgrades and and the refurbs that have happened over the past year. Manta took some time during the pandemic to uh, to make some incredible updates and upgrades. As we said in our email, we didn't really think Manta could get much better. Uh, it's it was already spectacular. But uh, what they've done is, is really uh, taken it to the next level. This is the, the beach um, and the, the resort on land, the seafront villas here and the garden rooms behind the main lodge over on the right hand side and the pool. Uh, and then of course the underwater room here just 200 yards off, uh, off the beach. Another great shot of the seafront villas. And again, the value here of these uh, uh, for the experience and for this level of homey rustic beach luxury barefoot luxury is is pretty extraordinary you know 520 uh dollars per person rack during the uh during the off season uh the low season for the seafront villas there are six of them all here stringed along this little bluff each with a private pathway down to the beach and one thing about the beach this is not and we're not gonna we're not gonna rain on zanzibar too much here but this is this is a beach that is is truly um, pristine, and and you don't. It's a it's not a private beach, but effectively it's your own beach. Uh, there's no vendors. There's uh, very few other people on this beach. You really do feel like you are at the end of the earth and have this amazing beach all to yourself. The the upgrades to the uh, seafront villas have been pretty extraordinary. Um, they've added this plunge pool and seating area that looks out over. Indian Ocean and the beach um, just opened up the front of the villas with these sliding glass uh, windows to give the, uh, just another incredible view of, of the ocean. Um, again, we're not talking about five-star bling and luxury. This is very much a barefoot luxury feel uh, with a lot of flavor of Pemba, decor that's uh, reminiscent of, of Pemba. And looking back from the uh, the bathroom uh, area to the end suite bath out to the bedroom and the beach beyond. Lots of little touches of of Pemben luxury as well throughout. The beautiful little design touches that you'll see um, in these rooms. And then just behind you have the superior garden and the standard garden rooms, which are also a, a tremendous value. Uh, and these have been upgraded considerably as well over the past year. This is a superior garden room with the seating area in front. The standard garden rooms have a similar little seating area, just a little bit smaller. The superior garden rooms do have a peekaboo view of the uh, of the ocean, kind of through the seafront villas. So um, you do get a little bit of that, but you're literally a, what would you say, Matt, Juma, three minute walk at most down to the beach from the garden rooms. Yeah, if that, yeah, if that. You're only a hundred yards away from the beach up there. Yeah, so you're, you're just a stone's throw away. The interiors are similar, a little bit smaller than the seafront villas. They don't have that plunge pool, but they do have this base, beautiful gardens and back, which is a unique feature of the garden rooms. And also an important note, uh, for those of you that remember, all the seafront villas have uh, the evening breeze cooling system over the bed. Well, now all of the superior garden rooms and the standard garden rooms also have evening breezes. So every single room at Manta now has the evening breeze air conditioning over the bed, which is a which is 
an amazing system and obviously a lot more environmentally uh, friendly. This is that in, that garden um, off the back of both the, the all, all the garden rooms with that outdoor shower. And a nice little seating area as well for your coffee, a little more private in the back if, if, if you or your guests prefer that. And also part of the upgrades has been a rebuild uh, of the spa. So the spa actually used to be the seventh seafront villa, which um, is no longer. And now there's been a spa that's been built a little bit closer down to the beach itself. The important thing to note is that with all of our rates, a daily spa treatment is included. So your guests get to have at least one spa treatment for free every single day. I can tell you from experience that's that you don't want to miss that spa treatment. <laughs> No, they really love that. Matt, anything or Jim, anything further on the spa you wanted to, to relay about the new spa? Uh, we call it the jungle spa. Actually, it's it's also important to, to note that all these trees are um, indigenous to Pemba and between the beach and the seafront villas, there's a, there's a kind of a jungle of all these um, beautiful trees and we decided to move the spa down into in the middle of these um, beautiful trees so the tree you see in the picture is actually in the center of the spa um, and we've got the treatment rooms all the way around the tree so it's uh and we just yeah you hear the sounds of the ocean and it's it's gorgeous so we're very very happy with that okay our guests love having a treatment every day it is definitely Does a highlight put it that way and then just a few more images just to set the sense of place. This is the uh, the main um, elevated deck area where a lot of the meals are uh, are taken here overlooking the ocean and the pool. You can see the underwater room here beyond. And then my favorite place, the beach bar, which is uh, literally steps from the beach and has uh, an incredible assortment of incredible of local tropical drinks and just a really great place to flop and completely unplug and relax. I think Manta really does illustrate true barefoot luxury. Matt, I think you said in our call yesterday, you welcome guests often and tell them, listen, if you want to take your shoes off, do it right now. There's no, there's no need for formal wear here. No. No dress codes. And again, the beach is, is one of the most extraordinary soft white coral sand beaches I've, I've ever experienced. Uh, a place that you can definitely spend a few hours reading a book or while in the day away or having a tropical drink. And what's also nice is that you can actually do snorkeling right from the beach. Um, at, at high tide, which, um, and even as the tide it recedes a little bit, there's, there's the ability to, to hop out into the, uh, into, the, into the ocean and go snorkeling straight from here. We also do have a snorkeling for conservation activity, which is a morning activity every day at 7 a.m. And that takes you out a little bit farther toward the, the drop off here. You can see where the underwater room is. And Matt, can you just cover a little bit more about what that snorkeling for conservation, the concept behind it is? Yeah, well, um, we've been working with the local communities on conserving um, the, the area for, for future fishing and basically protecting the reefs. There have been, been a few, uh, well, a few, there's been a lot in the, in the past um, of um, illegal fishing, wrong netting, and even dynamiting. So we got together and agreed for, uh, for just a, it's a small area, it's right in front of Manta, it's a one kilometer stretch all the way along the drop off. Um, and we agreed to, to zone this off. Um, we were with the government and with the fishers committees. Um, and we did this together so that we would be able to create a nursery actually. So instead of calling it a no take zone, we call it a breeding zone. And it is very much that. So it's been it's been going nine years now, and it's hit a it's hit an exponential um, curve in its in in the growth of the biodiversity and the numbers of fish in that area. 
I mean, you can you can basically snorkel a couple of hundred uh, yards or meters out onto the southern side or the northern side, and you notice a difference immediately. It's almost like a, you know, we we've got grouper coming back to the to the reef, and I'll talk a, a bit about diving. I saw the question about diving. Um, is one is the one of our loves um, as an activity for manta. But the the experience of diving in this in this conservation area is, is just compared to what it was 10 years ago is absolutely incredible. So um, snorkelers love it because you can from the shallow you've got the drop-off that goes to about 30 meters. And there's just everything, octopus, um, just everything, schools of big Ultra Valley. Um, and schools of schools of surgeons and unicorns, and it's just unreal. So we we had no idea how successful it would be, and the impact of this is that the fishermen now consider the area around the underwater room as one of the best fishing spots on Pemba, which is actually um, is very plain to see where you go in Galawas coming up onto the beach um, in, in their droves, which is sometimes a little overwhelming, but um, they are catching, uh, we recorded one day, um, I think it was about six weeks ago, 500 kilograms of tuna, uh, yellowfin tuna. So uh, the impact of this has just been great. Um, and through the Kwanini Foundation, we are doing um, quite a few campaigns with the local communities in the schools and the local children um, talking about why the reefs are so important, et cetera. And we call, we actually call the campaign, no reef, no fish, no food. Um, so it's all about awareness. And, you know, if, if we can do this in the small area, there's no reason why we couldn't do it along the whole um, Western um, coast of Pemba in certain spots, strategically placed. Um, obviously after research done by our team of scientists in the Kwanini Foundation. And yeah, I mean, I could talk a long time about what we're trying to do with the corridor all the, all the way down the West Coast. Um, it'll be a big thing. I'd be happy to talk to anybody about that at a later stage. Um, but it's a very ambitious project that will actually be a game changer, we believe, for the future of Zanzibar, the whole of Zanzibar, in the fact that it'll set a precedent um, for a foreign body um, to be delegated from the Zanzibar government um, for, for the day-to-day -day operations of, of the area um, concerning marine conservation. So if that actually happens, it'll be the first time that Tanzania actually and Zanzibar have ever done it. And we're actually on the table with the Attorney General right now, um, looking at that co-management agreement and that public-private partnership. So that's a very detailed, long discussion. So I won't get into that right now, but I'll be happy to tell everyone about that later. Yeah. Really, really so exciting a long, things. Long-winded answer. That's okay. Exciting things to come, and lots of great questions. We'll uh, we'll address those everybody at, uh, toward the end. Just want to uh, note in the time. Just want to keep moving ahead, and uh, and then we'll get to all your great questions. The pool, which was my daughter's favorite place at Manta, um, which is also a great place for, for diving, for, for learning to dive. Um, and Manta is, uh, Dennis, I know this is of interest to you, is, uh, is an incredible dive, has an incredible dive shop and a great place to, to learn to dive or as an experienced diver to, to spend a lot of time diving. But the pool is great for those introductory dives. It's deep enough in the, uh, in the deep end to do all of, all of the, uh, diving training that you need to do to then head out into the ocean. And then the night sky, I, I still remember looking up this extraordinary night sky at Manta and just imagining, you know, the universe beyond. Um, the underwater uh, room as well has this incredible glow uh, at night when it's occupied with the underwater lights. So just, just some extraordinary views both during the day and at night. And in the evenings, um, we try to do dining all over the place, not just on the elevated deck, but down on the beach. And that can be done every day. If your guests want to dine on the beach uh, every evening, that's something that can be, can be taken care of. It really comes down to what, uh, what is their pleasure and, and how can we fulfill it. 
the food at Manta. My daughter still talks about the the uh, the watermelon juice, the banana bread, the plantain chips, and I still remember the the incredible fresh seafood as well. But uh, again, please watch that Manta movie. You'll learn a lot about the cuisine and and the chef at Manta and how he integrates local fresh produce and spices and hemp and uh, culinary traditions into the menu. All right, and so the thing that so many people know about Manta, of course, is the underwater room. And it, it's a long and an amazing story that we don't have time for Matt or Juma to relay today, but needless to say, it is a very special part of the experience. I have to admit, um, I was a bit of a skeptic about the underwater room before I visited uh, Manta. I thought, no, this is just a marketing gimmick. And in some ways it is, um, but it, as Matt has already relayed, it is the reason that Manta has gotten the attention internationally on social media and of the Tanzanian government and has allowed it to create these incredible conservation programs. So it is really a tool for conservation um, uh, yes, and a, exactly. yeah, a tool for, uh, for promoting Manta and the style of tourism. But it does <laughs> lend itself to pretty extraordinary photos like this one. Um, I'm gonna show you a short video tour of the underwater room and then we'll talk briefly about the experience there. As I said, I, I came out to Manta as a bit of a skeptic, um, but I came away absolutely loving this experience. Now, I was there with my seven-year-old, oh, sorry, at the time, my four-year-old daughter. And quick note, minimum age is seven. Matt did make an exception for Grace and I, um, uh, but minimum age is seven for Manta ordinarily. We were there right before the, uh, the end of, or the beginning of the rainy season. So we were allowed to come in, but here she is in the underwater room in this incredible aquarium. And it is the most extraordinarily cool place. And it's definitely a must for guests of yours that are on a honeymoon, that are on a special, you know, uh, couple's trip, or that just absolutely are fascinated by marine life because you'd really literally do sleep with the fish and not in a mafioso sort of way. Um, as you can see, it fascinated her. I did not stay here with my four-year-old daughter, I will admit. A um, little bit too close quarters for a four-year-old, and I did want to get some sleep. This is a short video just to show you, and you can hear my daughter at the end, but this is what we're looking at when we're in the under underwater room. I don't know if you could hear her, but she said there might be some sea turtles too, which I didn't actually see, but that may, they may are sea turtles, aren't there, Matt? Yeah, a lot. Uh, Hawksbill and green turtle. And here we are on the top deck. So the, the underwater room is actually, a, a, is, has three levels. You have the sun deck or the sundowner deck or the, or the uh, jumping into the ocean deck as, as we were doing, or I was doing. Uh, you have the main deck where there's a beautiful lounge and, and like a dining area, as well as the marine toilet and, and sink. And then you have the underwater room itself, the bedroom, with, uh, with that incredible view of the aquarium around you, such as this. And Matt already talked about the impact that the underwater room has had in this conservation area that uh, has been created thanks to it. 
but it really is um, an extraordinary story that Matt, I think we'll we'll have to record a video of you telling the story of how the underwater room came about. Um, but it, it's uh, it's that. amazing. You can just see that incredible anomaly in the reef that is just perfectly um, engineered almost for a room of this kind. And now, Dennis, diving. So clearly you can see from these, from the underwater room photos that diving is pretty spectacular as is snorkeling at Manta because of this amazing reef. I've had the pleasure to snorkel and dive a couple of times when I was there and uh, it's some of the best diving I've done. And I'm not a, certainly not a, uh, that experienced of a diver, but I have, I have done my fair share in the Caribbean and Manta is right up there. And it's just getting better and better, Matt, as this conservation area continues to grow, seeing um, a, a real regeneration of the marine life. And uh, and this is now scientifically verified by the Quantini Foundation and the scientists you have involved, actually documenting the improvements of the, of the reef. And then this is a, just to show, again, another short video to show you what it's like underwater. Linda's flatworm. Linda's flatworm. Yeah, it's called it's a flatworm called Linda's flatworm. Well, there was your moment of Zen, everyone, for the day. Matt, was all of that filmed on Manta's home reef, or did that include some of the offshore reefs as well? No, that I actually took all that that footage with my GoPro on the reef, on the um, conservation in the conservation house reef. And I think that's another thing about the diving. Um, the diving is a very, it's extremely easy diving. Um, a lot of, not a lot of currents, um, warm water, average temperature about 28 degrees centigrade. Um, and it's, it's very personalized diving. It's also diving where you don't bump into another group of divers. So we don't just go diving every morning necessarily at a clock. We, we match it with the tide. And we talk to all our guests about how and you know how they like to dive and what they like to see. So we match up. We've got lots of different dive sites, um, which are again uh, for different levels of diver. Um, so we've got a lot of variety there, but it's also a very um, personalized diving experience. So which is good. Um, I could actually mention something quite exciting that's happening right now, and that. We've had a very long relationship with Mares and Mares equipment. We've always found their equipment to be, to be amazing. So we um, are hopefully in June, this June, we're gonna be launching as a Mares flagship dive center in the area. We've been with Paddy, we were a five-star Paddy dive center and have been with Paddy for, for a long time now, um, over 15 years. Um, and we, we've got a very good reputation for, for diving around Pemba, which is, again, um, one of the things Pemba's so famous for. 
And uh, one of the reasons is the visibility of the water. You know, we've got the Pemba Channel between mainland and the island. Um, and that Pemba Channel is a very deep channel. Um, it goes down over a thousand meters in the middle of the channel. So it offers a lot of um, clear water coming through with high tides and visibility is sometimes just unreal. I mean, compared to other places I've dived, this is uh, unreal, 75 meters sometimes. So it looks, it's like diving in air. And that's actually one of the things that Pemba's most famous for is, um, is the visibility. I can answer more questions about diving as well, if you'd like. Then. And there's a host of other activities uh, that are available. We don't have, we don't have nitrox yet. Just to answer that question quickly. Sorry, Ted. <laughs> I'm just asking, answering the Dennis's questions great. about diving. Got it. All right. Well, there are other activities at Manta beyond uh, snorkeling and diving. Um, there's, of course, the Angala Sunset Cruise, um, which is a, a must do, I think. It's going out on one of the local fishing um, sail Angalas here. And then the Sandbank trip. I mean, talk about paradise. Uh, this is very much tide dependent, but something that uh, that is pretty extraordinary to head off to this offshore sandbank for an afternoon uh, of swimming and sunbathing and chilling out and completely, completely unplugging from the rest of the, the digital world. Uh, and then on land, there's several activities, but one that's I found to be really impactful and fun and relaxed was just going for a stroll with, this is Saidi, who was uh, our, my guide or service fundi, I think, um, who each, in, each group Guest um, is assigned a guide or a service fundi who will be there for them throughout their stay. And uh, Saidi asked us, "Do you want to go see the lighthouse, which is a which is an, an old British um, installed lighthouse, I think from the early uh, 1904 or 1905, something like this?" And while doing that, um, um, swing by my house and meet the family. And so we did. We went to the lighthouse, which was really cool. And then on the way home. We're strolling through these, you know, local footpaths and and uh, finished at Saidi's house where his wife offered to, to sew Grace a dress. <laughs> and I said, well, of course, Grace was very excited. She got her measurements there. And we met Saidi's family and all very unchoreographed and relaxed, real, um, meaningful human interactions. And Three or four days later, Grace had the, her pick of not one, but two beautifully uh, sewn what looked like Disney princess dresses um, that we still have to this day. And it was just the generosity and the incredibly warm welcome and something and, and just the unchoreographed spontaneous ability to go and visit a local home without preparation, without hoopla. It just felt again like you were going to visit the neighbors, uh, the friends of, of of your your the neighbors of your friends that you were visiting. You know, again that whole concept of being at home. And this comes back to what Juma so eloquently discussed earlier as the Manta family. And here is much of the Manta family. And I think you said Juma, all but one of these guys is still at Manta, which this is a pretty old picture now, several years, five plus years old, which I think speaks to, you know, to that concept of Quanini and the family. And I felt it very much when I was there um, with Grace on a daddy-daughter getaway. Again, this concept of family and home, here we are playing bow uh, with Saleh in, uh, in the main lodge. And with Haji, who gave Grace a, a stuffed uh, bush baby on arrival, she held onto that little stuffed animal for seven days straight. And with Saidi in the lodge playing hide, hide and seek under the pillows and at the spa with the spa ladies, where I think that's Grace's enduring memories. Well, I got to have a massage. She got her fingers and toenails painted, which I think is still her number one memory from Manta. But it just feels like you can flop down and play hide and seek on the couch. This is not, there's not a lot of pretense or formalities at all. 
Atlanta. It is truly that concept of, of family and home and barefoot luxury. Juma, do you want to add anything further on the Manta family before we wrap things up? Or on just welcoming guests, the aim of the Manta family? Um, I think I should say that uh, having the chance of being introduced to to our families or the, the service Fundi's family, it's a uh, it's part of the of it's part of the Kwanini, it's part of the why, you know. Because uh, first on the side of the service fundi, it shows pride to his family of the of the work that he's doing, you know, that he's proud of his work. And that's why he he has the confidence of taking someone and to introduce uh, to the families, you know. And uh, mm -hmm that's how we we create the the bond between us and our new families member uh, and our new family members that's what i can say so true it is so true and here we are sadly having to leave our new family um getting a picture with all the guys uh as we left for the airport and i think there's probably many 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 people out there in the world who have visited Mansu who have a very similar picture Okay, so just lastly, and then we'll get to the questions, just getting to Pemba and the logistics of, of doing that. There's actually some questions in here about that. So um, Matt or Juma, do you just, can you just cover the, the logistics of say you're on safari in the Serengeti, how does one then get to, to Pemba? What are the steps to do so? I can cover that one. Um, when flying through from anywhere in Tanzania, um, because Pemba doesn't actually host more than six resorts in the whole island, um, there aren't many direct flights. Wings um, are, are busy and busy season. There may be some direct flights from Tanga. And you can see on the, the, the map on the left that there is a, a Tanga Pemba route, but that's not a very common route. So you, you probably, in fact, you do need to go all the way through Zanzibar to get to Pemba. So it's, it's a place that requires a little bit of effort, um, certainly. Um, it's a 30 minute flight from Zanzibar to Pemba and then another hour and 20 minutes in the car from the airport to us. So it isn't one of those places that's, that's very accessible and easy to get to, um, but it, that does help us in, in, in the fact that you know, when you go diving, you're diving alone. When you are on the beach in the sandbank, there's no one else there on that sandbank with you. Um, you're not surrounded by another hundred um, guests. So it's a very different um, experience to Zanzibar. Um, so getting to getting to Pemba is through Zanzibar. And there are a lot of local operators who do who do this flight on a daily basis from very early morning to late in the evening to, to late afternoon, just before sunset. Um, and it's it's very easy to book that. I can also give you details on how to do that. Um, there's actually a local um, airline um, website and hub that you can log on to called tripindigo.com. Um, and tripindigo.com works really well. It's got most of the carriers there, and you can buy that. You can you can purchase tickets directly. So that's an easy that's an easy one. Um, Pemba itself. Um, is almost the same size as Zanzibar, um, which is the island is actually, the name of the island is Nguja. Um, but I, I, I imagine a lot, of, a lot of you on the call and on this webinar have actually been to Zanzibar already. So I'm probably just telling you what you already know, um, but not a lot of people have been to, to Pemba. Maybe I can ask, answer specific questions about- Yeah, there's one actually related to- there to flights, Matt, and that is that um, can Manta arrange those flights from the mainland uh, or better to arrange those through a DMC or to book um, through? Yeah, we, we, used to, we used to do the flights, but now th these days we don't, do, we don't arrange those flights directly. Um, DMCs or operators will, will arrange their own travel all the way through from 
arriving in Tanzania, all the way flying up to the Serengeti, et cetera, because there's quite a bit of flying, as, as everyone knows, around Tanzania. It's a big country. So, no, we don't do that. And the DMCs normally handle all of that, all of those logistics. And are there any notes on uh, flight timings these days uh, in our new normal in terms of number of flights? Um, no, I'd, I'd, I'd say from, from Zanzibar to Pemba, um, there must be it must be 12, 12 flights a day in and out with four or five different carriers. So there is, it's, it's very accessible um, from Zanzibar, but you need to get to Zanzibar first, unless you charter, obviously, and a, a charter with a group um, is also possible from wherever in Tanzania, directly into Pemba. And just a note on the, the land or road transfer from Chake Chake Airport, which is right here in the center. Yeah. You can see my, my mouse isn't cooperating, but right here in the center, uh, it's an hour and a half drive up to the northern tip of the islands. And then this is a tarmac road at the red for most of the drive. And then you um, go through the Nguzi, I believe, Nguzi Forest, Nguzi yeah. Forest, which is not tarmac, um, but it's quite a, quite a beautiful uh, way to almost transport yourself from, you know, the digital overpopulated crazy world into this tunnel of green. And then in, you arrive out of the, out of the, out of the forest and you are at um, this, this beautiful Indian ocean and, and Manta. Um, I think it's a great way to, again, kind of detach yourself and to begin to, to get into the Kwanini mood. Um, yes, it's an hour and a half, but it is actually quite a lovely drive uh, rural um, driving through small villages and homesteads and farms. Um, Pemba is pretty much the polar opposite of Zanzibar in terms of development. Um, take Zanzibar, I don't know, 40, 50 years ago, maybe. So it is, uh, it is not, um, you know, it's not an overdeveloped island by any stretch. So it's kind of a nice way to get into that Quanini and that beach mode. Um, and, uh, and, and again, worth it for that location there on the northern tip and that extraordinary beach. And Manta contracts that with a, a local transportation company, I think they're Toyota Prados. Uh, it costs $45 each way for that, that road transfer, which is not included in the cost, that's an additional cost. So just keep that uh, in mind. Uh, let's see, any other logistical questions here? I think um, there was a question, Matt, about, um, you know, who is Manta not for? And, um, and maybe that's a good kind of compare and contrast between Zanzibar, actually, and, and Pemba. But how, can you answer that question? Who would you say Manta is, is not for? Who's not the right guest or who isn't Kwanini? Um, yeah, good question. Um, Manta is not for... Um, guests who are more interested in um, the architecture or the bling of a place. Um, Manta's not for people who are expecting a, a flat screen TV in the room. Um, there's no music at Manta. Um, it's not for anyone wanting a beach party. Um, so I would say it's, it's, it's not for people who, who like to be um, involved in a, in a bustling um, cultural experience, which is Stone Town, which again is a special experience. Um, so it's not for people who are not prepared to get away and travel that extra distance to find actually one of the most remote places in Tanzania, because we're in the north part of the North Island. So it's actually one of the most remote places in Tanzania. So it's for people who who just want to get away um, from the madding crowds and find themselves in a place that's not heavily populated with tourism, etc. So it's for people who, yeah, want a place that isn't exploited by tourism yet. Karen we'll, I don't know if that uh, answers, does that answer the question? I think that helps, Matt, absolutely. And Karen, we'll answer your question by email uh, in terms of comparing it to Fundu. Um, which is another great property on, on Pemba. Um, so we'll send you that by email. Anybody else that's interested in that compare and contrast with Fundu, I think it's best addressed uh, 
over email. No, thank you. That was great. Yeah, just in general, um, the seasons for diving. And uh, there's also a question about does it get windy at certain times of year? You know, again, Dennis will probably back me up here. Uh, people talk about it, uh, seasonal diving in lots of places in the world. What we found on Pemba is that diving actually can be great in the middle of the monsoon rain season. You know, so it really, um, there is no annual seasonal diving that's uh, time that's better to dive than other times. Um, it very much depends on currents and what's going on with the weather around the area. So it's, it's really about, um, yeah, coming at a time when it's calm. So if you, so for the, for the most, for the best chance to get the best conditions, I would say between, um, July and end of February into, into March. So our really rainy, we know we close Manta actually, which we should mention, we close in April, May, um, for the monsoon, um, rains and winds. So we close for two months and we're normally very busy during those two months doing renovations and, and lots of other stuff. Um, but that's not the best time of the year to, to dive. So there are, there are times when you'll have better chance of the best conditions, but otherwise I've dived in, in April, I've dived in May and June and had some of the best dives. So it's very hard to say. I think we've covered most of the questions um, and we're at an hour now, a little over an hour. So really appreciate everyone uh, joining us. Uh, any questions that we didn't get to, we'll definitely address them via email. Uh, thanks so much for your time and for hopefully uh, enjoying this uh, bit of, of, of Manta uh, tour that we had. There's the contact information on your screen. We do have a tour operator or travel advisor uh, section on the website. Uh, you can see it on your screen. I'll also send through a link to the high resolution images uh, that you can that can utilize for your marketing. And um, you're all, you know where to find Gretchen, Ely and I, uh, should you have any questions on this side. And you can also, of course, contact Matt and Juma as well. Matt, Juma, thanks for staying up real late on your side. Really appreciate oh, uh, your insights. You. It was great Very to see you both. And thanks everyone for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers. Bye. Thanks all. Thank you very much. Thank you.